What's up guys, Chaos here, bringing you guys another video. Today I'm bringing you guys an awesome gameplay, man. It's a super exciting game, maybe the game of the year. Uh, but while I show you guys the lineup, because I know you guys have been asking for that, as you guys take a look at that, I just want to thank you guys. You guys have been killing the like button, man. I just want to ask that you guys will continue to smash that thing. And if we get 200 likes on this video, I'll bring you guys another Chaos Coaching Series episode. And man, let's jump into this game, because it's super exciting. Okay, boys, so as always, I'm not going to be on the face cam today. I'm going to let the face cam from the original stream be up so that you can see my reactions and stuff like that. I know you guys like that. So, uh, man, this was, a, this was an awesome game. So, we're on the last chance qualifying leaderboards. It's a salary cap game. Um, and you see I matched up with Koik. Now, this guy, well known on the, on the leaderboards for being a super pound the rock guy. This guy wants to run every play. So when you match up with him, you know it's going to be a frustrating game. Um, but he's a good player, regardless. You run, you pass, whatever. He's a good player. So it's going to be a really good game. As always, man, if you guys like when I'm running on offense and defense, I have my uh, ebooks in the description. They're very, very, very extensive. It go covers the trips tight end to the max. It's all the stuff that I run. I don't hold anything out. Update coming to trips tight end later this week. Likely uh, Friday or this weekend. And then um, I have my defense on Big Nickel over G and 335 odd. And then I'm running 335. And uh, I'll drop a card for you guys right above my, my face cam, top right, where the gamer tag is. I'll put a 335 video, uh, the playlist in there for all the stuff I like to do in 335. Update coming to that as well on YouTube later this week, man. So let's jump into the video. You guys saw we, we paused the game. We did our sub. He did his subs. Doing my subs now. Um, really, really liking this 335 on the leaderboards. Uh, I feel like 3-2-5 is easily the best mixture of being able to blitz as well as play coverage. Um, in my ebook, 3 3 5 odd is a very, very, very good blitz. And Big Nickel over G is a very, very good coverage defense. But this kind of puts them both together, and I like that. So that's why I've been using 3 3 5 right there. You see me blow up when I'm the first play. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This first drive, I do a great job against the run. Um, I don't know how I did. But the rest of this game is going to be a struggle versus the run, man. I don't know what happened. Like, we shut it down the first couple of plays. But, man, it got tougher and tougher and tougher. And he, he stuck with it, man. He's he's one of those guys where, like, he's going to not just let... Like, if you stop it once, he's like, oh, I'm not running that anymore. He is going to make you stop it and again and again and again. And it makes it tough. But regardless, right here, we play coverage against Deuce Close. And... Uh, he doesn't have anything open. We send our spy, we get our sack, and we get off the field. So perfect start to the game, man. Um, we make him go three and out. And uh, there's not really, I mean, as a runner, he's not going to go for it on fourth and 15. That's not a situation he wants to be in. Um, at most, he wants to be in like a fourth and four. I, like That's probably like his max range for what he feels comfortable in. Now, he probably will go for it if it's like less than 10. But as far as comfortability, probably fourth and four is probably his max. Um, if I had to guess, but regardless, we got to stop. He keeps the punt in bounds as well, so we get to start the game on the 30. Perfect start to the game. We get a stop. Now we're going to try to get seven, so if if I can get a stop, go up seven, um, I'm in perfect position to have complete control of the game. Um, so we're going to try to do just that, and uh, you see him here. He's probably setting his audibles. That's why it takes a while on his first play. If you guys don't, man, make sure you guys set your audibles, set your subs, Make sure you have the right people in the right spots to, for they can be the most effective and set your audibles for your best plays. It's very, very important that you guys do that. So if you guys aren't doing that, please start doing so. Just a little baby baby uh, beginner tip there. Uh, definitely something you guys should be doing. First play here, we go to pay slot corner. One of our, it's became one of our favorite plays and uh, we pick up about eight to Vernon there. As always, I'll always give you guys personnel tips. Um, Vernon Davis, now when I didn't, I said to you guys before, I did not like him in Weekend League. He pissed me all the way off. He fumbled a ton. In Salary Cap, I've played about eight, nine games. I don't think he's fumbled once. And I've taken some pretty good licks. As you saw right there, that was a hit stick. Out of bounds or not, you can still fumble. Um, and I don't think he's fumbled one time for me. So I, I'm really liking Vernon. So we're gonna probably, probably, um, probably stick with him, at least for now. Um, he also gets a lot of spec catches, so very good player right there just nice little hitch take your uh take your five yard routes um you only have to go for the long ball i personally love taking hitches drags flats wheels 
I'll take my five yard gains all day. And if you're running trips tight end, I feel like that's almost how you have to play. Um, in bunch, you can kind of throw a poster, crosser, or corner out almost every play. Uh, right there, we tried Moss. Um, we felt like he could have gotten an ag there on Ron Parker. Uh, but just didn't get the animation. I don't mind that read, to be completely honest with you. I think on stream, I'm saying I would throw that again. I would throw that again. I probably would throw it again. I mean, this is the way, it's the way the game plays. If you have a one-on-one -on -one with your best player, and they're not manned up, they're just kind of like in a zone lurking there, you can highball spec them all the time. Uh, right here, we hit our in route to Vernon, and uh, we're able to get up near the first down. I think I ended up spinning backwards. <laughs> yeah, I did to make it third and inches. Pretty stupid. I think I was trying to spin uh, the other way, and I just, I guess I just messed up my stick there, but um regardless i think this was before this i want to say it was before the sneak patch i'm not i don't remember i can't remember if this game was before the sneak patch or not it might not have been uh but if it was before the sneak patch i de you definitely run sneak here 100 percent. but now as you guys know the patch came out and sneak doesn't get you five yards anymore um which is a good thing um i really didn't think that the the fall forward was that bad other than in goal line. Now, in goal line, when you're running sneak and you're getting four yards, like, that is absolutely atrocious. Like, that's so bad. But, like, with every other play, like, like if a running back is going one-on-one -on -one with a guy who was just getting blocked and he just block shedded, he probably should drag him for four yards. Like, maybe not in that exact animation because the animation looked weird, but the principle itself of dragging a guy two or three yards when you have all the momentum makes sense to me. But back to the game. We, uh, we're up 7 nothing. We are literally dominating this game. We got a 3 and out the first possession, so we're up a stop. Now we're up 7. We're in a position now where if we get one more stop, the game's pretty much cooked, especially him being a runner because um, it's our ball at halftime, so we'll be in a great shape. So we're really, really trying to get a stop right here, and uh, we're going to do our best to do so. So we know he's going to go back to the run. He's coming out of that deuce close. We did a good job against it before, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking we'll probably do a good job again. Um, as you can see, the way I was trying to stop it earlier was by backing up with my linebacker. So you can see my middle linebackers back off and then sprinting for, forward, clicking off, and then letting the computer take over and try to stop them. And you see it does a really good job again right there. And I thought, shoot, I'm going to be able to do this all day. This is perfect defense. Just wait. It will get rough. And with that, I did have to find Wham defense after this game. You guys will see. I'll put it in the card above as well now. For the Wham defense, I just dropped that last week. So if you guys want to see that, it'll be there. Um, but he went to the stretch here because I, I think he's like, this guy's got really good Wham defense. I'm in trouble, so I'm going to go to the stretch. We blow the stretch up, and um, I'm thinking, shoot, he's about to pass again, and we're, we're going to uh, we're gonna be golden grand. We're about to get off the field again and dominate this guy. I'm thinking we're about to blow this kid all the way out right now, to be completely honest with you. He goes back to the pass here. And this was the biggest play of the game, to be honest with you. He trucks Night Train Lane and says, get out of my way. Breaks four more tackles and gains 30 yards. Right there, if Night Train Lane makes that tackle, we put him on a fourth and four. He's probably done if we get off the field right there. The game's probably over. So that's why I say it was the biggest play of the game. Like, he was getting ready to get stopped a second time, and I'm getting ready to dominate the game and end it. Instead, he ends up getting 30 yards on a play that should have been five. And, and he's moving on. And as you can see now, I tried my wham defense again. It didn't stop it. He gains five. And now it's he's like, okay, now I'm rolling. See, that, that play right there, whether it should have or not, gave him a ton of confidence. When you're getting, when you're getting boxed early in the game like that, um, you're feeling to yourself like, man, dude, what can I do? He's blowing up my run every play. And I've been in this situation before. We all have. I've played a guy. I think he's pretty good. And, like, say you get stopped first possession. He scores with ease, right? Because we scored pretty easy. And then you're back on your second possession. You're on a third and ten. You haven't gained a yard. And you're like, gosh, dang, dude, I'm in trouble. And you start sweating a little bit. Things start getting a little uneasy. And when you kind of get, like, a... I'm not going to say super lucky because it wasn't that lucky. I mean, all he did was truck. And then the breaking tackles after was lucky. But when you get a big play like that, it starts, like, relieving. Okay, whew. Like, man, okay, we got out of that. Let me... Let me settle back down and we can put together a drive. And as you can see, now he's driving on me. He's running wham. I'm not doing a good job of blowing it up. So he should keep running it. And um, and whatever was working for me before is not working now. And he spins me out and he takes it for a touchdown. So big turn of events there. Um, we tried our best to to so what I'm doing, what I'm doing with the run forward click off thing is I'm backing up so that 
the offensive line doesn't register that they need to block me. Then as soon as they hike it, I'm sprinting forward, I'm clicking off, and I'm letting the computer AI find his way through the hole to try to blow it up. Um, it worked the first two or three times, as you guys saw. Maybe I started doing it a little differently. I don't know. Or maybe, maybe it just, I got lucky the first couple times. I don't know, but it stopped working. Um, and the rest of this game, I'm pretty much fishing for wham defense. Obviously, you should have wham defense if you come into these leaderboards. I had been out of town um, with our conference tournament, and I did not want to, I did not want to lab or do anything like that, bro. I just wanted to play. So I just got out there and played, and you're going to see as this game goes on, wham just hurts me more and more and more. And it forced me to go to the, go to the, the lab and find something, which is why I was able to release that YouTube video to you guys. But regardless, man, we're still up a stop, so we're not in the worst position here. If we can go get seven before halftime and then clock, like have good clock management so that we can go up 14-7 and then get the ball at half and then go up possibly 17-7 or 21-7, we'll be in really, really good shape. Um, so that's what, I, that's what our plan is right here. We don't want to score too quickly. Um, so we're kind of just going to be taking our time, taking our time, not... Not like not chew clocking them or anything, but just just making sure that we we kind of uh, take a methodical drive down this field. We don't need to pick up 50 yards in one play. So put a counter go right here, and uh, we throw our crosser and we get picked. I don't know what I said on the stream. I didn't know what that was. Um, that's probably the farthest back I've ever seen a cloud play. It was just a first and ten, so I don't know. I don't know if. Like, I don't think playing sticks would have helped him there. I don't know. If it was a deep quarter, it would have got pushed back by the fade. So I'm guessing it had to have been a cloud. Um, and maybe my fade taking a second to get bumped back kept it from being coming back down. I don't know. I, I've i never seen a cloud play that deep before. Uh, I'm pretty sure I go back to that play in this game and I get to throw a wide open crosser. Um, not gonna. Don't quote me on it, though. I believe so, though. But regardless... I can't make that read if even if I'm I'm pretty sure it's about to get open can't throw it if it's not open right it's a bad read so uh, we made a mistake we gave our stop back the stop that we earned on the first possession we gave it back to him throwing a stupid pick on a first down which you should never do especially he he wasn't able to stop me really I, I was playing really good offense uh, up until that point and I had my drag didn't want to throw it got greedy tried to throw my crosser and we ended up throwing a pick and we're having trouble stopping the run. We're going down to the two minute warning here. And we, ever since the first session, we haven't showed a possible shot at stopping this. He's gaining six, seven, eight more every single play. So uh, we're trying different things now. We're trying to uh, cross man our safeties now, which I've talked about before. And uh, that does a little bit better job there. But the thing about that is what I'm doing right now is you can see a cutback lane out to the left. Um, in he's going to start taking that because the middle is just so clogged up. I have my linebackers blitzing. I'm cross manning my safeties. And then I have my, I'm not baselining. So my, my corners are pressed to the side. And there you go right there. He cuts left. A little bit of a scary play. Um, if my guy misses that tackle right there, he is to the crib 100%. As you can see, I told you guys, putting a runner like that in a fourth down situation is not his ideal situation. If, if, if this is a passing player, if they're in a bunch of trips right now, I would bet probably 9 out of 10 times they go for this fourth down. Um, but since it's, since he does, he's a runner, he doesn't feel as comfortable passing. You put him in a fourth down situation, he'll kick his field goal. So I guess it's half a stop there. Not the worst thing in the world. If we can go get his touchdown here and go up 14-10 before half, just like we were before, leave him no time, get the ball back at halftime, we'll be up 14-10 with ball with a chance to go up two possessions out of halftime so not the worst not the worst result out of a pick um obviously we wish we didn't throw that pick but it's not the end of the world uh you can live with that and we did a good job getting off the field and we think we have a decent thing for at least run defense right now um we stopped it a couple times but that cutback did scare me some so we're, st we're still searching a little bit but we felt like we while we're manning up our safeties we're doing a pretty good job from that Big run right there. All I was really doing was trying to run to get off the hash. I've told you guys before, if you're in a passing offense, uh, whether it's trip side and bunch or even something anti-meta, your your routes are gonna react differently based on which hash you're on. Your corner routes might work differently. Your crossers might work differently. 
and you lap up basically for a hash because you're you're rarely ever in the middle of the field other than when you get your little uh get your touchbacks stuff like that you're rarely ever in the middle of the field you're usually on a hash or at least close to it so you lap up for a hash and pretty much the first play of every drive uh when i get a touchback i run the ball um and uh and get myself to a hash so that i can start passing the ball i don't like wasting it down on a pass where I, it might not work exactly how i labbed it from a non-hash so that's my reason for that now we're doing a good job of driving and uh, that's why i ran the ball right there clock really isn't too much of a factor um unless i play it stupidly um because i have two timeouts and over a minute so i'm not too worried about the time right there we hit odell didn't want to fumble the ball driving fine no reason to take a hit there so i just fall uh, but honestly i feel like i'm taking a little bit too much time now the run wasn't a, a problem for me I gained good yards and I didn't think the time was a factor, but I am taking a little bit too much time here and it's uh, rewatching it here. It's kind of bothering me. I want to, I probably want to be within like the 15 right now. I'm on the 25, so I probably should be going a little bit faster. I'm using motion. And I'm wasting a lot of time. Um, and I kind of, especially if I had three timeouts, this would be a little better, but right there, my, uh, my streak gets bumped by the cloud again. I don't know what it is with that what that cloud is doing to my streak, but he is getting really bumped really bad. And that just caused me to not be able to throw my out route against that cloud. Um, I don't know what's going on with it. Maybe it's because PA counter go is a counter play action, which is different than a regular play action. Um, so it could be causing a weird streak. Um, but other than that, I can't really think of what the issue might be. But regardless, it caused me to throw a pick and then it caused me to take a hit stick right there and have to blow one of my timeouts whereas that out route probably gets me out of bounds 10 out of 10 times or 9 out of 10 times if if the streak just goes up the field normally but regardless i had to take both timeouts now and now like i said i think i went too slow um took way too much time on my plays and it's gonna force me to i kind of have to either get out of bounds right here or go to the end zone so i'm trying to draw up a flood concept to the right where we're going to try to hit our flat and get out of bounds and we got a weird animation on the catch um and we end up staying in bounds i was trying to get out of bounds and then maybe take one more shot at the end zone there but we kind of screwed off that drive um like i said i don't think i played clock management perfectly there uh i didn't mind the run on that first and 10 when there was about a minute 25 left the problem was the very next play where i took 35 seconds to, to hike the ball i should have been going a little bit faster should have been going like had a little bit more urgency and made sure I at least got a shot at the end zone. If we end up setting up for three, three that drive, that's not a bad like a bad thing. We tie the game, we get the ball at half. But we want to be settling for three because we couldn't score, not because we ran out of time. And we ran out of time because that's my fault. So that's something you guys can learn from me right there. If you have less time and you don't have all your timeouts, make sure you play the clock a little bit better and have a little bit more urgency. Um, I didn't have to rush, but I shouldn't have been taking my time. And I was taking my time, so. It's almost like the saying, go quick, but don't hurry. I should have been going quick, but I didn't need to rush my plays. So regardless, we tie the game up and we get the ball at halftime. So if we go get seven right here, we're up 17-10. We're, we're in a spot once again where if we if we get a stop, we win the game. Uh, so if we get a touchdown, we get a stop, we win the game. So that's where we're at now. Um, so we're going to try to drive down the field right there. As I was commending Vernon earlier today, he just gets hit right in the hands and drops it that one was I, i'm not gonna blame Vernon for that that's just the game uh that wasn't really a real drop it's it's like a drop where it's like they just the game's just broken and they just donk it off their hands like i don't really understand what that but that was actually a huge play instead of it being third and five it's third and 11 uh which is actually a huge difference it, it completely changes the play call that i need so i call a play where i could pick up a decent amount of yards here and we're about to have a wide open corner route and the second we're about to throw it he gets a shed sack now we're on a fourth and 15. um i decide to punt where during the stream i wasn't really uh worried about punting here i didn't mind it but thinking back on it i'm i kind of wish i didn't punt simply because it lets him just run the ball and clock me um because that's all he was doing he wasn't passing the ball he's only passed the ball one time this game so far um so I kind of wish I just tried to go for it. And if I didn't get it, he just, he's stuck right there on the goal line. Um, or not the goal line, but the red zone area. And he has to try to 
put together a, a, uh, a short drive where the red zone's kind of tough. Um, it makes stopping the run a little a little bit easier, and the pa any passes that he did have makes tougher. So right there, he gets great blocking, man. Everyone gets picked up. He gets a wide hole that could fit a truck, and he spins me out and takes it to a touchdown. So we did a great job the first drive against Wham. Ever since, he has been eating me for lunch. I cannot stop this thing if my life depended on it. Um, and we have completely choked this game off. So we were up 7-0 with a stop. Then we had a chance to go up 14-7 before halftime through a pick. Then we had a chance to go up 14-10 before halftime. Took way too long on our drive and only got three. Then we had a chance to go up 17-10 out of halftime and we get stopped. So we have literally turned this game from our complete control and given all the control back to them. So now we're on a drive where if we don't get seven, we're going to lose. Like, I I am going to lose if I don't get seven on this drive. Um, we try to go to PA Shot Wheel. As I said before, I don't like being on a hash. I only have a couple plays where I feel comfortable calling it, even if I'm in the middle. That was one of them. He did a good job. He played hard flats on both sides. Stopped both my zig routes. And uh, I had to roll out so I couldn't throw my S post. So, good defense by him. And now we're going back to uh, PA Counter Go. I think on this one, like I said before, the fade is not going to get bumped as bad. And you see it didn't, and it allowed me th to throw that out route earlier. Uh, not earlier, but um, before it stopped. Like last time I had to throw the out route, like it was stopped on the sideline facing back towards me. Right there, I got to throw it almost on the cut, which was uh, a lot better. And it allowed me to get out of bounds and not take a hit stick. Third and five here, so it's a big play. Um, we need to get this first down. We got to get a drive going. We've completely gotten away from our away from our bread and butter and not away from our bread and butter but just away from our comfortability state in this game that's what i should have meant, uh, meant to say but we take a false start so things just really aren't going well for us we try to fake hike them and we take a false start i never i always thought you shouldn't get a false start if you only fake hike once if you fake hike twice then you should get a false start um that's just my opinion but that's for another day right here we're going to one of our favorite money plays right now pay counter go with a route specialist and uh we hit our post right over the middle of the field, and Odell makes the play of the day. Great, great catch by him right there. Perfect animation. He diving, catches it, keeps him from getting hit-sticked, uh, and we're able to pick up a huge chunk right there. So now we're moving. And it's just like I said before, we just had a play so earlier. He was down 7 nothing, puts himself in a 3rd and 10 situation, getting ready to be down two stops, and he gets a monster play. And that's almost like a, whoo, man, all right. We're all right now. We finally got a first down. We can move the ball. You get it. You almost do a sigh of relief. Right there, that was a sigh of relief for me. I had blown a game where I was literally dominating it, and I'd handed it back to him. And I was on a third and ten, and I'm reeling a little bit. And we needed a big play, and we got it. So sigh of relief a little bit. Right there, we tried to motion a uh, motion a streak, and we actually probably had him open, but while he was open, Vic was shedding the sack, so we couldn't throw it. I ended up getting six, Vic just making Vic-like plays. And uh, as you guys saw earlier in the video, I use 73 cap Vic. Um, I don't use the best Vic. This one works really, really well for me. Uh, he breaks sacks like you see there. He's fast enough. He makes all the throws. So I have no reason to go to the best Vic. Um, I'd probably just stay with that one. Right there, you see me take my drag and fall. Like I said, man, I really haven't played bad offense this game. It's been mental mistakes on my own accord where I have let him stop me uh, or kept myself from getting points. So uh, there was no way I was going to take a fumble or anything right here. So I just fall down with Vernon. No reason to do anything else. Uh, right here, we motion in an out route. We have a wide open speed out. We probably have a touchdown. You see me, I'm pissed. If you look back at the play, our little deep speed out was wide open. He played hard flats um, and we were about to throw it and we, we got shed sacks. So tough break there. And I think a lot, big part of that was I was keeping the PA from counter. I like keeping PA a ton now. And I do it pretty much every time on shot wheel and slot corner. But I don't ever keep it. I shouldn't ever keep it on PA counter go because it's a different PA. Um, but right there, Vernon. Huge play. I told you guys I really, really like Vernon Davis. I hit my drag right there. He was able to make two people miss on a spin. And we turned a second and long into a third and two. And that's down near the red zone, which is not the easiest thing to do. 
Um, so you see me here. I called a play. So since I went out of bounds, I had to call a play. But I wanted the clock to run out. If you got a bounce in the third quarter or the first quarter or the second quarter before the two minute warning, the clock will run if you call a play. My guys needed rest. You saw them all yellow. Um, so I called a play just to make sure the clock would run out and, uh, and make sure I got my guys some rest. So make sure you guys note that if you guys ever want the clock to run out, but you went out of bounds, just call a play if it's not the fourth quarter and you'll be able to get um, the first down. Right here, we, uh, we throw our hitch and Moss makes a big time play. I forgot I had route specialists out there. You guys saw I had like a weird like little cross cross drag slant. That's one of the route specialist routes. I was that replaced smoke screen. Um, and I haven't gotten used to it yet. That was supposed to be an out route and to hold the flat. But regardless, worked out for us. We were able to um, get a touchdown from it. Much needed touchdown to get us back in this game. Now what we're thinking is we just need one stop. If we get one stop, there's no way there's we're losing this game. Because there's no way he can keep us from getting three. We've shown great offense. We've only stopped ourselves. He hasn't really stopped us all game. Um, so still searching for uh, for Wham defense. Now you guys see me on the outside linebacker instead of the middle linebacker. I was trying to shoot that gap. Um, and I did not stand in the right spot. If you guys want to see the right spot, as I mentioned earlier, check out my Wham defense video. But I decided right then... Okay, I'm over that. I just gave him the biggest game ever. I'm off that linebacker. Um, so I tried to grab the nickel here, and uh, I end up getting tripped up, and he gets another big game. I just can't stop it. Uh, I told you guys, he he just didn't have to pass. After that first drop, I don't know what happened to my wham defense. It was going so well, and I was like, oh, this is great. I have wham defense. This dude's going to have problems all game. I'm not going to get any trouble from him. And man, oh man, did it ever change. I cannot stop this run. I can't even stop it for a few yards. He is getting chunk after chunk. And you see him, he cut there. If he makes the right cut, he's out right there. He picked the wrong guy right there. We got lucky again. Um, he probably could have picked up 10 to 15 or maybe more if he had cut all the way outside. But regardless, we got him in a third and one here. We're trying to, uh, we're trying to blow this thing up. We move our nickel corner back and he picks up just enough for the first down, so. He moves the chains. Right now we're thinking he can probably clock us out and take the last three, so we're not really liking the spot we're in. Um, if anything, if he's gonna gain yards, if I'm not gonna get a stop, I'd almost want him to pick up a big big chunk of yards right here, just so he can't clock me out, because I wanna get back on offense. I don't think he can stop me if I'm back on offense. Um, so I don't wanna give him a chance to clock me out and not give me the ball again. I want the ball at least one more time. And right there, guys, we make the perfect, we finally, we finally blow it up in the backfield. And you see me, I'm sick. He breaks three tackles, two other people dumb out and dive at him and miss. And he outruns everybody in the end zone. It was super frustrating. I was very heated after this play, man. Because we finally thought we actually had a chance at stopping him. Because if you put him in a second and 12, then maybe he only gains a couple on the next one. He's back in that third and 10 passing spot. Where if he doesn't get a first down, he's going to kick his three, just like he did before. And he breaks a huge run. But on the contrary, like I said before, at least we're going to get an offensive possession. I said I did not want him to clock me out. That would piss me off because I don't think he can stop me. So if he scores early enough, I'll have time to just go get a seven myself, uh, which is what happened. So I'm not going to uh, not gonna trip on that. We're going to – we'll figure it out. Uh, right there. I told you guys I'm comfortable with a couple plays on the hash. Um, I mean, not on a hash. Went back to the, the, the PA shot wheel, and he locks it up again. So I probably should have ran the ball. I have time. We have all three timeouts. We have the two-minute warning. Um, time really isn't too much of a factor right now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have minded a run on that last play simply because we would have been able to um, – we would have been able to just get off a hash and and move on to the next play. Um, like it, it wasn't a big deal to me. Instead, we throw an incompletion, and we're still stuck on that same hash, which is the same dilemma we were in before. But regardless, there we're able to hit our out route again, um, and we're able to pick up nine. So big play there. Now we need this first down. I want to just get this first down by any means necessary. It doesn't really matter how many yards I get, and if I can get this first down, then we can kind of reset and we're good to go. We hit our corner route. And Vernon, Mr. Vernon, told you guys, hangs on to everything. He's very, very, very good. 
I love the way he played for me these first like nine or ten games. Um, and we moved the chains. So driving fine, we're up near the 50. Like I said, clock isn't really a factor. Now, I don't want to just chew clock, but I'm not in a rush. I can call my plays, make sure I get the perfect play out there and make sure I adjust to whatever he's doing, not just going out there calling plays and rushing. So that's something to note. Um, right here, we go back to verticals. Nothing wrong with taking my running back wheel right there. And we're able to make a guy miss. And as you see, I don't go out of bounds. There's no reason for me to go out of bounds. I don't want to give him the ball back with, with 45 seconds and with, th with three timeouts. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to give him a chance to win the game. Um, I want this to be the last possession. Or since he's not really a passer, I wouldn't mind giving him the ball with about 25 seconds. Let him maybe throw a pig, make a mistake. But since he's a runner, doesn't really have time to go get three himself. Um, that's about the perfect scenario. Um, but scoring with about 10 seconds left isn't bad either. Um, if I'm able to do that, I'm, that's cool with me. We can just go to overtime and, and battle it out there. So regardless here, we're going to uh, double in sale. Very, very, very good play. I love this play right now. It's one of my favorites um, with that motion. And we just take our drag and we pick up another first down. Now there's about a minute to go. We still have all three timeouts. Clock's still not really a factor. Not worried about it too, too much. Um, we're still in that be quick, don't hurry scenario. Um, right there, we we're about to have our S post, but we had to roll out right and uh, couldn't get our pass off. That's okay. We stopped the clock with a throw out of bounds. Not the biggest deal. Um, it would have been nice to stay in the pocket though and hit that, hit that S post. Regardless, so he hasn't shown me stopping verticals uh, with a wheel so I'm going back to verticals with a wheel he hasn't shown the ability to stop it all day um, and right there we only get two which I was kind of frustrated about good read versus cloud flat probably should have picked up five to six but not the end of the world uh, third and eight we need to, we need to pick up this first down now though so we need to get the chains moving we're gonna go to one of our best plays uh, whenever you're in serenity like this and you need a first down you go to your best play my best play is PA counter go I'm gonna call PA counter go and uh, you see the drag from Vernon here, and we're gonna take it, and he gets rocked. That's probably the one drop I was frustrated about, um, but you can't be too frustrated about it. He got a perfect click on animation, and, and he, he rocked me. What can I say? Um, it was a big play by him, and that puts me in a tough spot now. If I don't get this first down, I'm gonna lose the game. Um, as I said, I'll drive. Clock wasn't really a factor. I just need to make sure I score. Um, I still have all three of my timeouts. 26 seconds is plenty. If we get this first down, we're good to go. Um, and we're gonna go to slot corner here. And we're gonna pick up a first down. Julio Jones with the catch of the day. Big time dot, we call our timeout. And we have 20 seconds. Still plenty of time. We can, we have our two timeouts. We can, we can make plays and bounds. We just need to make sure we pick up yards. And uh, if we have a shot at the end zone, we're gonna take it. Um, we're going to PA shot wheel here. We try to, uh, we're trying, it looked like he kept his uh, outside third last play, so I, I try to um, do a, like a cover three beater. Try to highball it to Moss. To be honest with you, I think I had that. Um, I'd probably throw that again. It looked to me like the wheel could have got a great animation. He had an open pocket, the cloud flat was occupied by the out route, and the deep blue would have just got agged on. Um, so I don't really, I don't really mind that read. Um, but we don't get a good animation, and right here, Odell, baby. I remember anyone that's been with me, been on my YouTube, you guys saw me. I complained tremendously about Calvin Johnson in that spot. He wouldn't go get it for me. He never even tried to jump. Odell Beckham is the best receiver to be outside in trips in this game. He went up and he snagged it on four people and we earned ourselves in overtime. Couldn't be any more excited about that. We've, we had control of the game. We lost complete control of the game. And now we've uh, we've pretty much evened it up and we're gonna go to overtime. And to be completely honest with you, the way I'm thinking about it is, if we go to overtime and he gets the ball first, I'm probably not stopping him because I can't stop him. If I get the ball first, he not stopping me. He hasn't really stopped me all day. So we'll see how it goes. Um, well, if I just gotta stop these couple runs and then we'll get into our overtime. And uh, whoever gets the ball first is gonna win, man. It's pretty nerve-wracking spot I had some people telling me to go for two I thought about it um but I just can't go for two right there I have all the momentum uh, I just tied the game up so I'm not really I don't think I go for two in that spot um, I just play the game right and hope I get the ball first and if I don't 
Maybe we can hold him to three or something. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't like going for, um, I don't like going for two right there. But right there, it's pretty funny. I was complaining because I was, I was in Mana three deep, and my guy's block sheds on Wham. I'm like, oh, where were all these block sheds the entire game? And my guy wants to shed on three deep with one second left in the game. But we get the ball first. You see, we won the coin toss. Might as well celebrate now because we we weren't stopping them if we if we had to kick. So we'll take it. Uh, of course, we're gonna receive, and if we go get seven, we win the game. Um, and if we don't, we're probably gonna lose. So, gonna try to put together a drive here. Uh, we're on a hash, so I would run the ball. Hopefully, I don't pass here. I don't remember exactly what I did, but I should pass. I mean, I should run. Excuse me. Um, and it looks like that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So, play it smart, man. Just get off the hash. No reason to, no reason to waste a play and throw an incompletion and still be stuck on the hash. So. Running for no gain is as good as an incompletion, but now I'm on a hash and I'm comfortable passing from this spot. So that's why that's better than in, better than an incompletion. Um, right here we go to PA slot corner. We take our drag and uh, spin up field and Vernon gets another first down for us. Big play. Uh, it kind of looked like we were just gonna run out of bounds, uh, which is probably why he went for that hit stick. A lot of times people will strafe up on drags like that, but I kind of just ran straight at the sideline, making him think I was gonna run out of bounds and uh, was able to spin him. So that was a big first down. Now that we got the first chains moving, we're feeling good. He hasn't been able to stop verticals all day, so I'm going back to it. Um, he's been playing a lot of cloud flats, so I usually just take my wheel route, like right there. If, if he's not gonna if he's not gonna play hard flats, take your wheel, take your wheel, take your wheel. Now, I only gained three yards, but that's because I broke a tackle backwards. Um, usually that would probably be like five to six, and that's there's nothing wrong with five to six. Um, so. See Vernon is tired, you see me going back and forth. If you guys are ever tired, just go back and forth in the huddle. Um, your guys will eventually not be tired. And, um, or at least they'll gain some of their energy back. And uh, that, that'll be good for you. So just make sure you guys do that. Right here, we're going to double and sail. Probably our favorite play. Um, our second favorite play. And uh, we hit our corner out. Monster gain. Just kidding. It donks off Moss's hands. You see me, I'm standing up, I'm frustrated. That's the second time this game where it literally just hits your receiver right in the hand and it just bounces off for no reason. That's not a player drop. That is literally a glitch in the game where it just bounces off your player's hand. So frustrating play. The, the first drop in the game caused me to have to punt. The second drop right there put me on a third and seven when I should have been in field goal range. Um, but fact of the matter is we gotta keep fighting. Um, we go to counter go here. We've got our wheel deep. I mean, we, we had our streak deep, I think. I really think we did. I didn't throw it. I don't know if I saw it and was scared or if I just missed it, but I thought we had our streak deep. Didn't throw it. All good, we'll take our first down, but I guess it's not the worst thing in the world to not throw the streak there, because if I happen to not complete it, we're stuck on a fourth and seven and for, our, for our game, and I felt like we've been out playing them, so don't want to do that. Um, you don't want to force anything, but I do think I had a touchdown there. Um, also, something I didn't mention earlier was I called timeout. Um, I called timeout because my guys were tired. We're in overtime, so timeouts don't really matter outside of, I guess, icing the kicker. Um, you don't really have to save clock or anything, so nothing wrong with calling a timeout in overtime and making sure that your players are fresh so that you can have your best players on the field ready to dot. Um, right there, we take our zig. I thought we had our post over the middle. Probably Mr. Reed right there. Um, so we put ourselves in another third and seven situation. If I can have that one back, I'm definitely throwing my post and pretty much getting in field goal range. Um, but not the, not the end of the world. I mean, third and seven is not bad. It's a lot better than third and 10. Um, you never wanna get behind on the sticks. Um, that's how you get stopped. And Madden, if you get behind on the sticks, that's really how you get stopped a lot of the time. That and turnovers, so. Um, nothing wrong with taking your three yard dot right there and right here my man Randy Moss beats this guy off the press and he wasn't having nothing of it Touchdown Randy. You see the stats right there, man 300 yards to 30 He threw one pass. Oh my gosh, but hey, he didn't have to pass dude I mean, I couldn't stop the run to save my life. So hope you guys enjoy man like, comment, and subscribe. And if we get 200 likes on this video, we will drop another coaching series, man. I hope you guys are enjoying these. Oh, as always, let me know in the comment section what I'm doing wrong and what I could do better. But take it easy, man. Peace.